<laughs> okay. Boy, do I have a story for everybody. And it involves this little tumor. This thing really brings me back to uh, the launch year of the Nintendo 3DS, just kind of keeping up with what the hell was going on with this whole thing, because uh, it, it was definitely kind of a weird time. You know, Nintendo just announced the Wii U and the 3DS just released in March of 2011. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a... I think Nintendo was kind of expecting the hype of both the launch of their new handheld and the announcement of their next new system to kind of carry them throughout the year. But uh, yeah, there wasn't anything to do. The 3D has launched with a, a, a pretty average selection of games. You know, there was definitely games to play, but most of those games were pretty like, you know, one and dones. You know, you just play it for a little bit and then you're like, yep, that's Rayman 3D. I think Nintendo was expecting Nintendogs plus Cats to be the big system system seller. Uh, the problem is it was just Nintendogs with cats. You know, Nintendogs worked really well the first time, but Nintendogs plus cats, well, it was a better version of Nintendogs. That's all it really was. It was Nintendogs with better graphics, and that can only get you so far. So far meaning a couple months until you have to slash the price of your system. And around this time, people were talking about how the 3DS was just not cutting it in terms of controls because Sony announced their next generation portable, which is exactly what it was called. The next generation portable, it was codenamed when it was originally announced uh, in January or February, early 2011, uh, NGP. It was called, uh, people were just like, J just call it the damn PSP2. Uh, and Sony was like, no, we'll call it this. PlayStation Vita, uh, I still don't really think that was the greatest name for this, mainly because uh, nobody knew what the hell this was. But everybody was ecstatic over it. Uh, namely because, hey, two thumbsticks. Pretty dumb reason to get excited over a portable, but hey, that was like one of the biggest problems with the original PSP. Yes, it did have an analog stick, but you know, when you wanted to do console quality games on a handheld like that, you know, you kind of need it too. So the Vita was announced having two analog sticks and pretty much having like PS3 quality looking games. Of course, now when we look at the games, we're like, all right, you know, let's get into PS3 quality, but it's not necessarily there. However, back in 2011, we didn't really see that. We were like, oh my God, that's Uncharted. So yeah, when Nintendo announced the 3DS and it launched in 2011 and uh, you know, as the PS Vita was getting all of its stuff announced and it launched, it was launching at a price of $249, which was the exact same price as the 3DS and the 3DS was definitely less powerful and only had one analog stick. People were going like, there's a design flaw with this system. And yeah, you know, like the circle pad is, is great for portable, portable play. I, I still think this is like a fantastic solution for an analog stick on a portable system like this. But I think everybody kind of looked at the system and said, there's a lot of space down here. It makes sense to put a second analog stick. And the 3DS was getting more and more console quality like games. Uh, you know, you got Ocarina of Time 3D a couple months after launch in June of 2011. And some of the big titles announced were uh, Resident Evil games, an Assassin's Creed game, Kingdom Hearts, Metal Gear Solid 3. You know, games that would really benefit from a second analog stick for camera control. So that was a big talking point online with a lot of gaming journalists talking about problems with the 3DS or uh, maybe even some developers. I can't recall any off the top of my head, but I'm sure developers kind of looked at the lack of a second analog stick and said, well, that's pretty damn dumb. So I remember this getting like randomly announced like in the middle of the night because uh, this accessory was announced like via a magazine article in Japan. And uh, you know, it just boom, just happened in the middle of the night. There it was. Finally, everybody's prayers were answered. The 3DS is getting a second analog stick. F*** you, Nintendo. Yeah, everybody pretty much almost instantly made fun of this thing. Uh, a lot of people were talking about, oh man, a Nintendo 3DS Lite. Like the DS had the Nintendo DS Lite, which pretty much solved all the uh, original DS's problems in terms of its ugliness. That system was fat and gross looking. The DS Lite was sleek. It was compact. It just looked good. And uh, the 3DS definitely had kind of those growing pains in terms of its design. You know, you have the layer cake ass looking system here. It has like a glittery coat, which, you know, kind of looks cool, but it's also a little strange. I, I don't know. Uh, and then, you know, the buttons 
are, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the buttons on the original 3DS, though I will say this is probably the most quality feeling 3DS of the whole like line of systems they released uh, of this, you know, handheld family tree. It, it just feels very premium, uh, even if it can look a little tacky. The start, home, and select buttons make me feel like I'm squishing a bug under tissue paper. People were saying like, oh man, the Nintendo 3DS Lite should be totally redesigned and have a second analog stick. But the problem with that is like you instantly just kind of put a big old split in your user base where, oh man, some of your users have an analog stick, some of your users don't. And it's just something where it's like, that, that doesn't really solve the issue at hand here. Just giving like a redesign of the 3DS and analog stick doesn't really solve the problem because most developers aren't gonna be incentivized to design games around that analog stick. They're always gonna have to design games around not having the analog stick just in case. And realistically, how many games are truly gonna utilize the second analog stick on the 3DS? It was only kind of like a couple games that were announced that were like truly like, oh yeah, you're gonna need camera control for this. Most of the games that released on the 3DS were 2D platformers, so in the end it didn't even matter. People just look at games like, oh, Metal Gear Solid 3D is coming to the 3DS. That's gonna be huge. And it's like, no, it never was going to be. Metal Gear is a big series, but it's like a remake of the third game on a, a Nintendo handheld. Like, is that really warranting? Redesigning a handheld and also splitting your entire user base in half? No. So this was the only solution that really made sense. An add-on for this system that gave it a second stick and also uh, more shoulder buttons and whatnot. Uh, and people, you know, like Nintendo pretty much gave everybody exactly what they were asking for, a solution to give the 3DS a second stick. And uh, then people were saying like, well, this is just impractical. I'm not gonna walk around the public with this thing. Yeah, like you were okay walking around in public with this thing. Well, now playing this is embarrassing. It's pretty much a soap dish <laughs> that the 3DS sits in uh, with the second analog stick and the triggers. Uh, it is an interesting design. It's obviously not a practical looking design, but it gets the job done. But strangely enough, it does require a power. As you can see, there's a screwdriver there and you can get at it with a coin. And yeah, opening it up, we can see it takes one AAA battery. Yeah, and uh, this one battery alone uh, literally lasts 480 hours. Makes you wonder why it even needs a battery to begin with, with that kind of battery life. I think a lot of people were kind of questioning like, oh, why doesn't it just draw power from the 3DS? Well, it's because this uses IR, uh, you know, it communicates with the IR sensor at the top of the 3DS, and there it is, so that way, you know, it can read the signal. And that makes it incredibly easy to just bam, put it in and, and play, and then bam, take it out, because, you know, this accessory does make it impossible to use other accessories with the 3DS, like the charging cradle or, or something like that. So yeah, we just pop this in right there, pop that open, and yeah, I have Resident Evil Revelations pulled up here, one of the Circle Pad Pro compatible games, and it's a little hard to see because the game itself is so dark, but as you know, you'll probably be able to tell, the Circle Pad Pro does work. If I go into the menus, uh, it doesn't work across there. In fact, uh, it doesn't even register when I hit the, uh, the R button here to activate the camera. If I hit the R button on the actual system itself, you can maybe see uh, it's saying, oh yeah, press L to activate the camera as well. Because on here, uh, you have the R button right here as a part of the Circle Pad Pro. Then the L button is just on the 3DS itself. Uh, the R button on the actual 3DS is still exposed, so you can still use the R button, but this is for you know convenience sake, you know, for the uh, Circle Pad Pro users. So the 3DS itself isn't really designed to take advantage of the Circle Pad Pro. Uh, the Circle Pad Pro is kind of here is just like, if you really need it. <laughs> but it does actually feel pretty nice in the hands, you know. Over time, when you play the 3DS, you start to notice like how uncomfortable it is to play the system. I was trying to play Metroid Samus Returns on this, and after playing Metroid Dread on the Nintendo Switch, you know, uh, having access to all the shoulder buttons and all the face buttons all at once, and you have to kind of just always hold the system like this, and you know, have, have your fingers available to every button known to man, uh, it kind of gets a little crampy, especially compared to using just a regular controller like on the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This doesn't feel great uh, because the back is completely flat and you have to kind of hold your fingers up here like this to grab the shoulder buttons. But with the Circle Pad Pro, you have 
some curves. It feels nice. I always found it to be a little strange how, uh, you know, the second analog stick is directly to the right of the face buttons. You know, that's pretty interesting, but you know, it, it does work. And having these extra triggers here is, is very nice. You know, it does, it does feel much better than the standard 3DS. It does feel a little strange because the consistency of this circle pad compared to the consistency of the circle pad on the system itself is different. So it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're using two different analog sticks. You know, they're both circle pads at the end of the day, but you know, the plastic and, you know, material used on the circle pad pro is different from, you know, the material used on the actual 3DS. So, you know, it can be a little off putting, but the circle pad pro does its job. It puts the 3DS right next to the PS Vita and says, I can do that too. I just need some help. Uh, the thing is in terms of how this was released and how many games supported it. I'm pretty sure Nintendo just released this as a way to shut people up. And here you go, here's your second analog sting. Now get the hell out of here. The Circle Pad Pro was only made available in North America at GameStop. And a lot of people were very much questioning that decision. They were kind of going, it's just like, oh, you can't just do that. Then nobody's gonna support the thing. Uh, I don't really think anybody was supporting the thing regardless. It was only like 20 bucks, but the only reason you'd buy it is if you have a game that you want to use it with. And there's only a select amount of games that worked with it. So why make it available widespread? You know, the only reason why you're gonna buy it is if you know directly, like it's just like, oh, I am a hardcore gamer that wants a second analog stick for this game. So I am gonna go to GameStop to buy this. Nobody's gonna walk in Walmart and go, oh gee, that looks pretty neat. I'm gonna buy that. Cause then they're gonna realize like, wow, there's barely any games that support this thing. So. You know, it makes sense in hindsight. But at the time, I think many people were expecting this to be the savior of the 3DS, blah, 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 blah. Because at the time, for some reason, I think people were thinking like, oh man, hardcore gaming on handhelds, that's what's up. It was pretty much an exact repeat of the PSP versus the Nintendo DS. Everybody looked at the PSP and said, oh, well, that's gonna win but then the DS won because it had better handheld games. And then when the 3DS went against the PS Vita, people were saying, oh, the PS Vita is gonna win. Look at all the stuff it has. And, yep. I think this thing was mainly made for Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter was huge in Japan and Nintendo secured Monster Hunter as basically exclusive to Nintendo systems at that moment. And uh, yeah, for a game as big as that, well, it can work without a second analog stick. You know, it has a lot of core fans that would really benefit from one. And yeah, many of the only games that support the thing were Monster Hunter releases, so that makes sense. But, you know, we did get a couple uh, other releases here. Resident Evil Revelations is one that definitely comes to mind. Uh, this is a game that, you know, it, it's cool to use the Circle Pad Pro with, but it's definitely not that necessary. It's something where, like, a game like Resident Evil 4, you know, that game was kind of designed with one analog stick in mind. Most of the Resident Evil games, you know, you just kind of, you know, use the analog stick just to control, you know, all, all your movement, because it is still kind of tank controls. So while the second analog stick is definitely beneficial in Revelations, uh, it's not super necessary. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3D is pretty much damn near, it, it's damn near required, because this is literally like a PS2 game on the 3DS. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3D also supported it, but the one game that really needed it did in fact support it. Kid Icarus Uprising. This is a game that's plagued by its control scheme, which, you know, makes sense. I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, oh, what the hell is this control scheme? You pretty much hold your 3DS and, you know, you hold it like this and you use your stylus to aim around with the touchscreen. And uh, yeah, it works. Uh, it just is very tiring. With how intense a game like this is, uh, yeah, this is definitely, you know, this, this is definitely a game that you wish you just had two analog sticks uh, one to move and one to aim with. And Kid Icarus Uprising supports the Circle Pad Pro. Look at that, it brings a tear to my eye, literally. Uh, yes, it supports the Circle Pad Pro, but uh, pretty much only for left-handed users. So that way, um, you, you know, hold the 3DS like this, and then you use your left hand to aim. That, that's what the Circle Pad Pro does in this game and nothing else. I understand mainly because the game was designed around, you know, the touchscreen control scheme. Um, so, you know, like absolutely reworking that late in development, it just, it just wasn't gonna fly. They instead bundled the game with an entire 3DS stand 
uh, just to make it more comfortable, uh, you know, rather than going back in and kind of working in Circle Pad Pro support. But I don't really think Nintendo wanted to make that like the definitive way to play the game with the Circle Pad Pro. I think they preferred to, uh, you know, just kind of do it like, you know, like, yeah, that works. Because this was never a priority to them. I don't think they ever wanted to make it required. But that doesn't mean they didn't support the fan base. Introducing the Circle Pad Pro XL. Yeah, uh, same damn thing, uh, just for the 3DS XL. And this was only available on Nintendo's online store. So yeah, that shows you how much Nintendo wanted people to know about these things. Uh, pretty much both of these were exclusive. And this was even more exclusive to a retailer nobody gave a shit about. But it literally works in the exact same way. It's pretty much designed in the exact same way. It's just, it's just bigger. It's a little more like molded here. Like it just has more of like a curve compared to this one, which is just more so flat. So, uh, you know, this might be a little more uh, comfortable, but uh, to be honest, I, I didn't really do much gaming with the Circle Pad Pro XL. What kind of Nintendo fan am I? But uh, I really lucked out with this one. Uh, I saw this at GameStop used. Uh, GameStop would have accessories for their systems kind of in those GameStop bags uh, that were just kind of these, these uh, you know, kind of Ziploc-esque bags that they would just put on their, uh, put on their little pegboard, their little, little hook with a bunch of stuff and you flip through all the accessories and you know, you'd find something. And I found the 3DS XL Circle Pad Pro, which is interesting considering like, I, I found it very surprising that GameStop would even have that in their system. I've heard stories that like they weren't allowed, they, they weren't able to accept certain video games because they never sold them in GameStops, you know? Like some games were maybe Amazon.com exclusives and because of that, GameStop didn't have them available in their system. They would scan the barcode and it wouldn't show up. So they were like, sorry, we can't accept this. So I find it very surprising that they accepted this, but probably because it's, it's an accessory, like probably, you know, same thing didn't apply. But I found this used at a GameStop and I will always be proud of that. I said that out loud. But those are pretty much the only Circle Pad Pros uh, ever made, uh, you know, it was pretty cool that they did it again for the uh, 3DS XL, but never the 2DS. I think they found it to be pretty pointless to make a Circle Pad Pro for this device, considering, you know, th this, this is a budget device. This is baby's first 3DS. And considering the lack of amount of games that actually use the Circle Pad Pro and the amount of people that were buying a 2DS that would actually want to use a Circle Pad Pro with Circle Pad Pro compatible games, it was so small that I'm sure, you know, I, I think anybody would tell a 2DS user that was like, damn, I really want to play this 3DS game with a Circle Pad Pro. You know, most people would just say, just just buy a 3DS or 3DS XL at that point. Or you can just tough it out and play a game without the Circle Pad Pro. No game requires it. So yeah, after a while, it just kind of seemed like that was it for 3DS games that use second sticks. But then the rebirth happened. The new 3DS line of systems giving us a second analog stick. Stick. The new 3DS systems were pretty much just like a Game Boy Color-esque revision of the 3DS, which meant, yes, these are 3DSs, but you can have entirely new games made specifically just for it. You know, I had a faster processor, just better overall hardware with, you know, a better camera, better 3D effect, all that stuff. So they thought, hey, let's throw in a second analog stick. Uh, this is in like a way that I don't think anybody really expected. I think everybody just expected you just put a similarly sized analog stick or circle pad uh, down here, you know, uh, that made sense. Uh, no, they put literally a pencil eraser here that does not move, it's touch sensitive. So, you know, you kind of use this basically exclusively for camera control. You pretty much just put your thumb over it and just kind of like move it around uh, without moving the stick. You just kind of move your thumb around. It does work. And as you can see, they actually programmed it into the menu system here for the 3DS. Unlike the Circle Pad Pro, I can move around, kinda. It's a little, it's a little hard to get used to, but it's pretty much just kind of like, you know, putting pressure on, on one side or another of, of the little nub here, the, the, the little nipple. And you can see if I just kind of like rock my thumb around on it, you know, it kind of keeps going all around here. So yeah, it does work. It's not ideal. It's pretty much exclusively used for camera control. So then it's just like, oh, I got to move 
uh, the camera slightly that way. And uh, you know, it is nice just being that close to the button so you can you know, use your face buttons and just uh, quickly go up there, uh, you know, quickly go up there, you know, it works. And yeah, it's called the C-Stick, similar to the GameCube's C-Stick, which pretty much stood for this was the camera stick. And this was the only way you could use a C-Stick in Smash Brothers, uh, Smash Brothers for 3DS, where, uh, you know, on the console versions of Smash Brothers, you can use the second analog stick to quickly charge smash attacks. And uh, you couldn't do that using the regular 3DS. It doesn't work with the Circle Pad Pro. And I think it's mainly because of processing power limitations. I don't know why, it, it, it's really strange. Uh, I think apparently, like, the Circle Pad Pro uses enough power where like Smash Brothers could not give up that kind of processing power to implement second analog stick functionality with the Circle Pad Pro. But because of the better processing power of the new 3DS and the uh, C stick being built in, you can do smash attacks with it in uh, on the new 3DS. So charging a smash attack in the boring way is holding the stick and uh, you know pressing the attack button at the same time and kind of charging that for a bit. So it's just like uh, I'm gonna go up, eh. I'm gonna go up. Eh. So I'm gonna do boom, uh, something like that. But you can use the C stick now. Look at that. It's just an easy boom, boom, boom. On the regular 3DS, you can only use uh, the analog stick and the A button to perform those smash attacks. Circle Pad Pro, like I said, doesn't work. And the Circle Pad Pro in itself is just, you know, it's comfortable to use and, and, it, and it functions, but like, damn, it is not meant to stay on this, on this system. The game card slot is covered. It's hard to access the volume. You can't even access the wireless switch, which is, you know, is on the side. I mean, usually why would you, but still. Can't access the SD card slot. It's just, it's, it's not meant to be used all the time, which is why for anybody who wants to use a second analog stick on 3DS games, uh, yeah, just kind of go with a new 3DS. But the introduction of the new 3DS actually kind of brought in this new interest in putting second analog stick support in 3DS software. There were a ton more games after this uh, revision was launched that actually supported not only the C-Stick on the new 3DS, but the Circle Pad Pro as well. And even from Nintendo themselves, uh, Majora's Mask 3D launched right alongside the new 3DS XL here in North America. And yeah, on the back, compatible with the Circle Pad Pro. Uh, the, you know, uh, precursor to the game Ocarina of Time 3D didn't even d support the Circle Pad Pro. Uh, so this was a really welcome addition. And of course, obviously, you know, it worked with the C-Stick, but hey, you know, it was really cool that Nintendo said, hey, we're gonna put C-Stick support in this game, but also we're gonna support the Circle Pad Pro. And the same can be said for Codename Steam. Circle Pad Pro support, Metroid Prime Federation Force, Circle Pad Pro compatible, Luigi's Mansion remake on 3DS, Circle Pad Pro compatible. It's really cool that they actually started implementing this kind of support in 3DS games, but didn't make it just for the new 3DS. You could still use that old Circle Pad Pro accessory in your sock drawer. So in the end, I don't really think this is a necessary accessory at all, especially if you have a new 3DS lying around, but it is such an interesting part of the 3DS history. Something that I feel like most people kind of easily forget was like a big deal at the beginning of the system's lifespan. Just the fact that it didn't have a second analog stick. Oh my God, what are you gonna do without a second analog stick? And no matter what, Nintendo still pretty much answered those cries with a big joke.